Hello again, everybody. It is Wes with Pikes Peak Trades and excited to give you another weekend update for uh, trading that ended the first full week of February 2021. What an incredible week for the Bulls. Uh, SPX and IWM were up all five days this week. We saw some extraordinary moves and in individual names and really some quite incredible things in breadth and momentum. And this is actually where I want to begin. You're looking at the, the New York Stock Exchange advanced decline issues cumulative line. So let me take a little bit of time and explain what it is you're looking at. So you're looking at the cumulative total of the number of stocks on that exchange, the, the, the net total that are advancing versus declining every trading day. And I want to point out some interesting things. Um, I had tweeted out that by what I was watching, I, I felt very confident that we are in the beginning stages of a big, big market melt up. And one of the things I'm looking at is the strength in this recent move from a week ago Friday's low. Let me begin there. This previous AD high occurred on January 20th. And let me get you into the S&P daily. So January 20th, we're looking right here at a closing high of about 38.52. Now I want to show you what happened over the next few days. We got a higher closing high, a little bit of a, of a takeaway, another higher closing high. Let's see what's happening on this NYAD. Lower, a little bit higher, lower. We are progressively going lower in advancing issues. There's more declining issues in advancing issues, even as the S&P 500 was reaching higher daily closes. That is the kind of divergence that ushers in corrections, and we saw it. Now, we didn't see a big top because the wave count is not yet mature. What I'm suggesting is when this wave count does mature, that we will see that type of divergence happen again. But look at what happened this week. Even before a new closing high was set on Wednesday, we were already above that previous high. And that would have been the clue that Thursday and Friday, we were gonna keep going higher. And, and then we've gone so high that we've now gone up and out, out of the upper Bollinger Band. Um, so is there now time for a short-term pullback? Well, of course, that's the question that everybody wants to know, and I'll, I'll get into my thoughts on that as well. So let's get into some of the weekly charts. Incredible move, and, and you're just seeing uh, strength across the board. I'm showing you what I think are projections and possible timings from the April and May time period for the S&P 500, somewhere between 43 and 4,600. So strong, strong advances based off what I've just described as accelerating breadth and momentum. And I think we will see an extended fifth wave. We got a minor four low. So an extended fifth wave of my primary count following that intermediate three high. I think we get a really frustrating move that could be as, as much of a decline in just time as is it is in price, but also the possibility of a much deeper retrace as well. And, and you'll see that on a few of the other names as we go through. Already showed you the SPX on the daily. And, and what we're really wondering here is, are we going to get some type of pullback? Are we going to get like a cup and handle pattern? Is this just going to keep going? My suggestion is we probably do get a thrust on Monday to try to touch this rail. This has been a really accurate and active rail. You're going to notice that it, it has repelled price all the way back since early November. One, two, three, four, five. I think it happens again. And I think it could be with, with a pop and a drop on Monday. And I'll show you some when we get into the, the, the short-term time frames across the board that this could be making some sense. Let me go ahead and get into that short-term frame so we stay in the same ticker here. And this is showing what I think the uh, end of day Friday is a bull flag. We have seen repeatedly over uh, the, the run-up since March that bull flags break out and can be bought. 
And, and now how the internals count is kind of what's going to separate whether we get a big pop out of there or not. I, I think the probability that we drop lower out of here is small, but if we do, uh, this one just slides over to here, and this two just slides over, and then there would be various places of support. Certainly this 200 period, 15-minute uh, MA. If I take you back to the daily, I think eventually we'd be, we'd be looking for support at either the 8 or the 21-day EMA. And then after that, that is the dip where you should get aggressive. Uh, when that happens, and it, it'll happen in some form, it could be shallow, that is really where you can be aggressive because from here, I think we're heading into the 4,000s. I don't think we're going to look back much uh, all the way into April or May. Okay, let me keep moving through. We're looking at the NASDAQ, and you're going to see I have the NASDAQ and the Qs in slightly different counts, and some of that is based on what I've seen historically, the NASDAQ being the index that's been around for a longer amount of time, um, and also a little bit of a test trial here to kind of see what happens over time. I have, uh, similar to the, to the SPX, the NASDAQ, looking for an extended fifth wave of a primary three. So a different degree here than the SPX, but basically the same type of move. If I show you um, the Qs, I've got a different um, overall degree, not a cycle low here. And I'm, and I'm looking uh, here um, for a primary move. Let me contrast that again so that this cycle low was in March. With Qs, I'm projecting a primary low in March. So uh, we're, we're, we're still, though, in the same type of, of ending move for this run. And I would point out, after you see some individual tech names, this target in the Qs is probably too low. Um, if we see the bullish type of resolution with Apple, with Amazon, with Microsoft. I'll throw Facebook in there, although I've got a bold projection coming up on Facebook. Of course, Google and Tesla. Uh, then it's much more likely that, that I think we, we get an even further FIB extension if tech can actually get back out in front and lead. Now, that's, that's not been happening uh, because we've been seeing small caps and financials. So we'll certainly spend time talking about that into the daily. It's a really similar setup as SPX here on the Qs. When are we going to have a chance to get aggressive on a pullback? Did it happen on Friday? Will it pop up a little bit more? So if I just take you briefly through that short-term look here, again, look at that bull flag. It's going to be consistent. You're going to see that a lot. And on, on these kind of the, here we're getting into the sub-minuet count. And really what, what's happening one, two, three, four. Did that put a fifth up? So we've got that topping one, or is it kind of an overlapping one, two, three? This is a four bull flag. And just like S&P, we get the pop out of it. So I'll be ready either way, but I, I think the likelihood is that Monday we actually open up. And then it's possible that we could get kind of a quick takedown. And I'll, I'll suggest some things. Um, let me get back to the S&P daily on why I think that could be happening. And, and I circled here past places where the daily MACD has gone from negative to positive. So we're, we're talking actually about a bullish cross where the blue MACD line crosses over the orange signal. And we're looking for here in this case, when did the move occur that you went from more negative numbers in blue to less negative, and it's happening right here. But then look at the volatility that came right after it. The next day was down, and then we had a couple volatile sessions. Move after the low in, in late October, right into where it's, it's crossing. So it's happening right here, into here, and we had volatility that followed just a few sessions later. It did it again, and it, it and it's it's possibly set up to do it again. That daily MACD just crossed, so that's why I think I think we're close. We're going to see something similar in IWM. Maybe Monday, Tuesday, we finally get that chance for 
an aggressive buy on a pullback. Okay, I do want to get into IWM and XLF before the individual names. I had tweeted out early on Friday uh, talking about just the rail-busting moves that IWM has done here in these channels uh, going, going back to November. And is it going to do it again? It certainly looks like we got the weekly close. So into the daily look, it's punching up above. And will it just continue? Well, like the S&P, IWM, when you get those daily MACD crosses, here's one, here's two, here's three, you get pullbacks that follow at various degrees fairly soon. And we just saw, just on the strong close, we saw that daily MACD cross positive. So again, I'm, I'm thinking Monday, Tuesday is, is when we see maybe a blow off short term top and we get that chance to get aggressive. By the way, this blue count that shows a much deeper correction on IWM, I think is very low probability. I think we see something to back test this rail and then we move strongly up. Now on the short term, so we can talk about some of the squiggles here, uh, like we did with QQQ and SPX. Do we have five full waves up? I think we could, one, two, three, four, and then here, one, two, three, four, five, but it's also possible that we've just seen kind of an extension within that last fifth wave and we get that, that pop up. Uh, again, I'll, I'll be ready for either. I think the likelihood is we pop up before we would drop. XLF. XLF, uh, since kind of the resolution here in September of this sideways movement, has actually been really, really nice to count. It channels well. It fibs well. It rarely does anything surprising like expanded flats or triangles. It pretty much impulses and zigzags, and it was up 6.7%. An amazing move again in financials. I have continued bullish targets. I think just like the others, it's working on an extended minor fifth. And just like the others, I'm ready to get aggressive. Now for XLF, you don't get much bang for your buck if, if you play options. They're, they're safe. They're, they're relatively um, not volatile, unlike something like Amazon. Uh, but what I would play this with is I would play this with FAS. I would put a little bit of 3x leverage on this, looking to try to catch that run that I think could, could be the big one uh, that certainly is going to get it back uh, to the all-time highs that it had already set here. Maybe that pop on Monday challenges that level, retreats again, gathers some fuel, and then we get that big move. Okay, now... Um, even if you don't like all of these tickers, I, I recommend you watch the whole video because there may be something that you pick up about Elliott Wave or about channeling uh, or about entries and exits. And I, I want to talk a little bit about the squiggles with XLF. So I, I want to talk about um, five, seven versus nine wave moves. So if I take you back here into early December, when we're in a, a minute four pullback, we would count these squiggles. And, and we would count as one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So seven waves are corrective. And this one, because of the overlapping way that this down, up, down zigzag created what is most likely a three wave move with another down, up, down zigzag, we give that a double zigzag. Okay, so seven wave moves are corrective. Seven wave moves are not impulsive. So let's look, how many waves up yet do we have on XLF? I would count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Is it likely that on the seventh wave up, we reached this minute one top? It is unlikely unless you actually think this entire move is a bearish correction that will follow with another down leg, which after what I've shown you with breadth and momentum is extremely unlikely. This combined with this nice bull flag is another reason why I think we get the pop. So when, when I'm tweeting out, I think we see that Monday, Tuesday pop. I'm, I'm just not firing something off the hip. I'm looking at a lot of things together 
And what I see is I think we do see a Monday, possibly Tuesday move. And then, because I did not aggressively buy the close, I'm hoping we have a chance to load up. Okay, so that's what I wanted to show on indices, main ETFs. Let's get into individual names. So let's get back into here and let's take a look at our big tech boys. So Apple here on the daily, I've got it in also an extended fifth wave, really nice target. Maybe it coincides almost perfectly with earnings. There isn't much I can show you special on the short term chart except to point out we got a punch up, a back test and a move off that 200 period, 15 minute MA. That's my trend follower. And that is a good sign going forward. Let's get into Amazon. So Amazon, this is the weekly. You're going to see a weekly close up and out of that declining rail. Confirmation, I think, that we, we have now resolved this range and we're going to be moving up. Into the daily, a back test, two of them. On the eight-day EMA, which is also bullish, you can see here my, my targets that would complete a, a minute and then a minor three as, as part of what I think will be a primary top. We'll talk in, in future weeks about the, the legitimacy of those values. Very curious on the short term for Amazon is are we in kind of a fifth leg punch to get up up here? Uh, really to get above this high, uh, or will we see in the purple count a little bit of a deeper two? If we get this deeper sub-degree two, that is a buy. That is going to be an opportunity to buy a dip if it, if it pulls back out of this previous gap range. This should be bought at least for a short short-term play, and you would be looking then for a run with small pullbacks on the way into the 3500s. Okay, I'm going to skip Facebook for now. I'm going to save Facebook for the last of the big tech. Let me get into here, Google. What a week for Google. It's biggest week since uh, the COVID crash of 14% is outstanding. Again, did we get this upper rail punch? I had tweeted that out that this was on its all-time monthly chart. And this is incredibly bullish if this holds. Now, again, like... Um, everything else, has it reached a short-term top? There's a lot of FIB confluence right in this area for the top. I have the possibility that it had a very quick and shallow minor wave, and it's just going to keep going up into the 2100s. I'm going to leave the possibility of an ABC down, mainly because this low here is not at a typical degree four. So if I show you that on the short-term it's going to look like the possibility of an ABC. Uh, but again, this doesn't look very corrective. So here, there's probably just as much probability that it just keeps marching. Let's get into Microsoft. Microsoft with some really nice high pennant-like consolidation and inside day here, almost another inside day. Actually, I believe this is another inside day. I think just some rest before its continued move. And I've got Microsoft having put in a nice little bull pennant. I think we get the pop, and it's probably going to be a healthy one with a little bit of movement up and down along the way. But eventually, I think towards the end of Feb that we see Microsoft, maybe in the middle of Feb, into the 250s. Into Tesla. So Tesla is one I don't have a lot of conviction on just because of the possibility of counts. So like Goog, there, there is the possibility of an ABC down to a lower degree four target. I would say that's lower probability because there's two topping targets that I have here in the, in the, the mid to high 900s. And so if I get you into what is the look on the short term, it's another flag, surprise, surprise, above the 200 period 15 minute MA. Will this then break up? And, and by the way, there's nothing that says that these are locked and set and can't extend. Those are just the two most obvious fibs. It could easily run 
uh, well into the 1000s before we see, um, in this case, I would be tracking a primary three top that would be very, very similar uh, to the NASDAQ. Okay, so that takes us through some big tech, except for Facebook. So I'm, I'm going to venture on a bold call here. I spent some time studying Facebook. And in the ways that I'm counting from its IPO, I see much more of a possibility that this last finishing move in Facebook is, is going to be the top, that it's going to create a cycle top. And whether I count it in the black or the red, it doesn't really matter. The only other bullish possibility is that this pullback here is only a wave two. The problem with that is it projects Facebook well into the 400s. And given the circumstances around Facebook, I'm not willing yet to go there unless it proves it. I think it seems much more probable that on this push that I'm projecting into quarter two 2021, that we could see a cycle degree top, which means this could be a name that could have one of the biggest pullbacks by magnitude and percentage of the ones that, that I chart. So let's see what happens on it. If I break you down here into the weekly, the way that I would give you a projection is the way that I calculate the move out of a pennant or a triangular range by averaging the top and the bottom of the range to create a midline, which is about at 275, and then adding the magnitude of the difference to that midline, and that's where I get a top of about 335. So I do think Facebook still has some upside, and in, in the short term, I think it actually is still an attractive play, especially, again, if we can get a viable pullback. I may be talking about a cycle degree potential top this year. Doesn't mean I won't play Facebook in the short term. Because to get to that triangle target, we've got to get a minor one, two, three, four, and five in order for that to happen. So let's see if this call holds any water. It's going to be certainly interesting to revisit this um, maybe in about two to three months. Okay, other names. And I'm going to try to go quickly. I know that I have a tendency to go um, a little bit long-winded. There's just so many awesome names to show you. By request AMD. I think the potential of a minute five push, and you're going to see a one-two possibility but I should also point out, as has been astutely pointed out by some good waivers, there's the possibility of a double top. Okay, so here and here, um, and uh, sorry, I should say a head and shoulders top where it's already progressing down. I do think low probability in the face of the rest of the market, but it is worth keeping your eye on. Now, wow, another bull flag. If that breaks above this consolidation range at about 89 can back test, I think I would be tempted to enter. Now, I would also say we're looking for only a three-way move because this has been choppy and hard to count. So I'm counting three-wave moves as an ending diagonal where this four traded into this one. So we would be looking for an A, get you back to the daily, an A, a B, and a C, just from an Elliott Wave perspective. Okay, another name that I traded, I did sell a little bit too early this week, is DraftKings. Let's see, any coincidence why it might have slowed down there? Uh, the answer is no, because that was the previous all-time high. So a little bit of rest here at its former all-time high, maybe a good idea. Maybe it makes its own bull flag before I think it pushes up very strongly into the 70s. I really like Netflix still. So you're going to see higher highs, higher lows off this low that barely held an invalidation level above 514.5. How about a nested set of ones and twos? So this would have been one if I had a little more conviction to pull the trigger on at the close Friday, being a little bit uncertain, knowing that we're extended at the range of the indices, I hesitated, but this one would be high on my list, as would NVIDIA. So we're still looking for resolution. It's been spending way too much time in the lower half of this range. It needs to get up there to get to these targets. And do we have 
we have a nested set of ones and twos. So that's my projection. Let's see if, if NVIDIA can get a little bit of boost this week. Roku, what an awesome week for Roku. This topping target that I had circled two weeks ago did sell. And what an amazing recovery. And I think Roku is now strongly right in the middle of a minor three. And if we could get that pullback, I would buy aggressively. This is another one that I had purchased a little bit too early, had sold a little bit too early as well, and didn't catch a lot of that move. And that was kind of my theme this week. I'll talk a little bit more about details when we get into Zoom. Okay, Virgin Galactic, 22.69% move this week. What an amazing move. Did it reach a top here? So a fib that suggests it could have a very bullish purple count that says it's just going to keep going. This would be the target if it actually needs some rest. On the short term, looky, looky, another bull flag. And this breakout, back test and move up, that would be an entry to catch something that could get up into the 80s. One more set of individual names for you. Let's get into, where is that tab? Beyond. Okay, now beyond a really kind of surprising big pullback here, but maybe after an extension move so big, it, it has held and I think it could get up. There's there's nothing really interesting on the short term. It's got to get, get above the, the 200 period MA with a move up and a back test to get me interested. It, it, it has a tendency to go really fast and then really slow. Disney. Look at this bull flag breakout. It never even back tested. And on the short term, would we be looking for another bull flag? There's the possibility there that this is a one, two, three, needing a four before it moves up into the 185s. I have Disney, two possible topping targets, low 190s or low 210s. Another name I really like, one of the best in its uh, sectors is Fastly. This massive cup with handle was bought aggressively. We didn't see quite the same amount of handle, although a little bit of a pullback. And when I take you into Fastly, it's a little bit like Zoom. I had bought this low, thinking that maybe we were done with the two and I was getting that second dip. I got stopped out here and didn't have the conviction, to, the conviction to buy back. And I'm probably gonna kick myself a little bit. It's probably nested. So a breakout, I would still buy because I've got very, very good targets on Fastly. So TDOC, one that's also just been relentless since it's low in November. A little bit of, of some pullbacks, but very healthy. Could we see a little bit of a cup and handle before it gets into the 300s. And on the short term, maybe not. It might just be in this kind of aggressive bull channel that could just hold it all the way up into the 300s. I decided I'm not gonna chase unless we do see something pull back here towards that MA again. Okay, Zoom. Talked about some, some misplays for me. I had bought Zoom here. Actually, I had bought it on the 28th after a higher low was set, had this day's low as my stop, it broke it, I got stopped out. That's when it set its one, and really, this was the two to buy. You had a bull hammer above these MAs on a channel line, right at a 50% fib, I just didn't pull the trigger. Obviously, after almost an 8% move, kicking myself. If I show you where it stopped, it shouldn't be surprising. This pivot right at 420 has been significant all the way through the recent activity of Zoom. And if I take you into the short term here, how about a little bit of rest? So there may be a pop and a drop, and maybe that's what gets these names. If some of these names that I'm suggesting might need a little bit of a bull flag pullback, that's what could cause the indices and ETFs to get the pop and then get this pullback. So let's see what happens. Um, another exciting week I'm, I'm certain is shaping up. Um, again, the long-term trend is so strong, the momentum and the breadth. Um, and I think 
Uh, the chances we see a significant top in February or March are small. I see it pushing into April, May. And as always, you project, you monitor, and you adjust and get ready for another really, really fun week.